Hello everyone, it's the 28th of January 2021 and I'm speaking to Sir Desmond Sway, New Forest West Conservative MP. You are the story of the day for me, Sir Desmond Sway, and I saw on Twitter this morning a, um, a tweet, a rather smug tweet I should say actually, from someone called Rob Powell, a political correspondent for Sky News, where he's been talking about you have been speaking to um, anti-vaccination group, Save Our Rights UK. Well, they're not an anti-vaccination group, they're an anti-lockdown group. And the story has gone to the Sky, BBC, The Times, The Independent, The Daily Mail. Um, you were in the news today. But what made me so angry when I saw that? And the reason it was made me so angry is because you were talking to people who were concerned and they are new political or new media groups. And I'm worried that in future politicians will feel we, you can't share your views with other platforms and influencers like myself. Um, I want to talk to you really, you know, I... Louise May Crefield, this is what's so hypocritical of Sky News, is Louise May Crefield, who founded Save Our Rights UK, was interviewed by Sky News herself. Now, she is a former executive member of Brighton Kempton Labour Party. Um, they've tried to label her as an anti-vaxxer. I don't see her as that at all. I see her as, as somebody who's brought about a, a grassroots uprising. I see them as a new political movement really growing on Facebook. They've been behind a lot of the protests. Of course, they've made mistakes and there are going to be people in there who have got different views and different angles and, and say COVID is a hoax. But they've tried to put, package her and that group in that kind of, with that title and with that label. You spoke to um, Del Bigtree as well from The High Wire. Um, again, he's just a, another media brand, I think, who's communicating to the public with a with information that they want to hear. So how are you today, um, Sir Desmond? And uh, what was your reaction to, to kind of what's happened today in terms of the media response to you giving those interviews? How did it all come about? Well, I, I, I'd much rather not be the focus of the media today. I was hoping the media story today would be AstraZeneca and the EU and, uh, and vaccinations. And it's always uh, very disconcerting to be at the center of a media frenzy, feeding frenzy. Um, but I, I I feel that I have been smeared in that I have been clearly deliberately associated with anti-vax um, when the reality is that I'm evangelical in my support for vaccination, as is clear from any cursory look at my website, the blogs on my website, from what I've been saying in the comments, indeed what I said to the Prime Minister yesterday. Some of, the, some of the media brands did get it right. I have to say the BBC called them an anti-lockdown campaigning group. Um, right. and, but most of them said they're anti-vaccination and, and packaged you into that yeah. as supporting. So I was, yeah, the, the, what seems to be a, 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 at issue is one, um, my complaint about the use of data and the way it's presented uh, and, and masking and that sort of thing. But all of those are things I've said in the House of Commons on the record. Uh, but two, uh, my expression of support to uh, save our rights, when I went and said, I said, well, you know, carry on, you know, uh, uh, an expression of support. The interview was exclusively about theirs and my shared opposition to lockdown. Uh, and that was my expression of support. You're so, not alone in uh, being anti-lockdown, are you? How many MPs are anti-lockdown? There are a lot. Oh, there are lots of there are an awful lot of MPs who are locked at that anti-lockdown. More than have voted against lockdown, um, and uh, I, I, that's common. And I have a huge correspondence from people who are anti-lockdown, and I think it's important for me as a politician not only have uh, I a right to express my opinion, I, I have a duty to express it and to engage with all sorts of This groups. isn't about your views, and, and like you say, it's shared by many politicians. This is about you being picked on by the old media, I believe, and being bullied and being smeared. And I think it's a sign and a signal to other politicians that might want to talk to other alternative media or new media, as I like to call it. I mean, I think I'm, I'm both really, in it because I've worked for the old media, but I'm creating my own platform. I think this is about you being targeted. I don't know if you know, the Great Barrington Declaration and Professor Martin Kulldorff, the top ep epidemiologist from Harvard Medical School. Now, he spoke to me. He spoke to BBC Northern Ireland. And I could see he really desperately wanted to get a message out about the Great Barrington Declaration, about focus protection. And what happened was I contacted him. I don't think he had a big comms team, a comms strategist, a PR company. He was literally just... Uh, t talking to anyone on Twitter, doing very small news channels. I managed to do an interview with him and then he was on the Richie Allen show. Now, The Guardian smeared him for that because 
you know, rightly or wrongly, Richie Allen has covered whatever he wants to cover, but he was smeared and attacked by The Guardian. And I've seen this happen over and over again. And the Great Barrington Declaration in particular, Professor Sinitra Gutcher from Oxford. Um, these people, when they try to, to share their professional views, are not listened to and debated with. They are shut down and smeared and bullied, I think. What do you think about that? And just before I move on, you know, you talk about the Great Barrington Declaration, just so people are aware today, 727,000 concerned citizens, 13,000 medical and public health scientists, and 40,000 medical practitioners who've signed the Great Barrington Declaration. So it's not a marginal view, you know, the, the anti-lockdown or people that believe focused protection and the age-targeted herd immunity strategy was the right strategy. But what do you think about the smearing of people like yourself and Professor Martin Kulldorff by these media brands? Uh, well, I think it's part of a, a very worrying phenomenon of um, effectively, we're getting to the stage uh, uh, of George Orwell's 1984 um, thought crime, the concept of thought crime. You know, these people are dissidents and they need to be branded and shut down and associated with um, uh, all sorts of things that are um, uh, beyond the pale as a way of frightening them off uh, and shutting them down. So uh, one way you can attack the views that I've, I've presented is by associating me with anti-vax because they're beyond the pale. Um, and that's, uh, that's one way of doing it. Um, and uh, you know, the, the notion that I should be, the Labour Party has today asked the Conservatives uh, that I should be suspended for what I've said, the opinions that I've expressed. This is, this is an attempt to silence anyone who has a minority opinion or differs um, or, or, or on issues of importance during the day. It's, you know, do we believe in free speech and freedom of expression or not? Um, but what about the COVID figures being manipulated? Is that, is that what's going to get you into trouble, do you think? Oh, but very probably. But I, these are things I've said in, in, in the House of Commons on the record. Um, the, 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 I've complained about the fact that we were told that, um, for example, in September, intensive care units were at 80% capacity, which is true. But of course, what they didn't say is that it's perfectly normal for the time of year. And the model that the NHS uses is to surge additional capacity when it needs it, rather than to run with spare capacity. Um, equally, many people will recall the furore when the two chiefs presented a scenario um, in the early autumn, uh, which involved 4,000 deaths per day. And within a couple of days, Professor Hennigan of Oxford University had um, uh, raised all sorts of perfectly legitimate questions about the way the data had been presented with you, was, was used and the Spectator magazine uh, piled in on that. And uh, in short order, the data was represented so you know, you, you don't regret. Really... You haven't. You have no regrets today. There's nothing you feel you should have said or done differently. Uh, well, well um, Michael Gove has demanded uh, that I apologise. Now I have a great deal of respect for Michael Gove. I have, in the past, backed him for the leadership of the Conservative Party, um, and I regard him as a friend. And uh, I will, you know, I have always had a respect for his opinion. But I'm not sure what I'm being asked to apologise for. You know, what specifically my apology should be for. Uh, and I just wonder to what extent he has fallen for a headline. You know, senior Tory MP um, backs anti-vax group. Which is, of course, nonsense. It is. And it's not the first time a politician has been targeted and smeared and... It's like, we're going after you today and we want rid of you. Um, and we are gonna have the, the media, I'm not gonna call them the mainstream media because I don't think they are. I think the mainstream media now are Google and YouTube, everyone's on Facebook. So many people yeah. are, are supportive of, of your views. Many people are supportive of your views. Many people have absolutely had enough of lockdown, particularly the third lockdown schools being shut until the 8th of March at least. Um, but they, they've gone for you, Sir Desmond, and I want to send out um, a message to the old media brands that we're living in a new world now, guys. 
I'm here, lots of other people are here, and we're going to protect politicians like Sir Desmond Swain, and we're not going to have this anymore. It is completely unacceptable. It is gutter journalism. It is smearing. It is targeting. It is trolling. And smug Rob Powell, political correspondent for Sky News, who put that tweet up today. I'm going to play a clip of that now very quickly, Sir Desmond. On Del Bigtree, did you know who he was before you gave the interview? I've never heard of Del Bigtree. So he was someone that's anti-vaccine and has said that the COVID vaccine I, could be I, the greatest I, again, scientific blunder again, in the history of I, mankind. I, again, I state, you know, having a conversation with someone is not in any way associating yourself with his point of view. You're lending the credibility uh, of a member of parliament to some groups which have views uh, which are not backed up by any scientific evidence. Well, I, 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 you know, the, the, the point is this, we're a democracy, we believe in free speech and free expression. So you were obviously chatting. They did say that you were aware of this recording. What did you make of the questioning by um, political correspondent Rob Powell there? Did you think that was good journalism? Uh, no, because he, he asked if he could recall the interview, but he asked if he could interview me, and I said no. I didn't want to be interviewed. So I think that's illegitimate to have used it. Uh, but uh, it doesn't surprise me. They don't realise they are losing their power. They are very, very arrogant. They are very, very mm. smug and they're very patronising. I hope GB News coming along soon is going to be different. Um, but you've got platforms now, you know, you can share your views. People people feel the truth. People know the truth. And you're not doing this for in any for any malicious intention, surely. What is your intention? What is your motivation? Why did you go into politics? Well, I, I my, my motivation is... Uh, to get us out of these uh, lockdown as, as quickly as possible, uh, to defeat the virus as quickly as possible. Um, I, I don't for one moment attribute any base motives to ministers. I just uh, disagree with the policy that they have adopted to achieve it. I'm, I'm with the Great Barrington Declaration. I'm, I'm one of those signatories. I believe that there were better ways to have done this. I think it was a huge mistake to have closed our schools uh, and does vastly more damage uh, than uh, remaining open. Uh, and I think the government, you know, frankly, has, has acknowledged that to some extent. So, uh, but why did I go into politics? I wanted to go into politics because I wanted to change things for the better. And to be fair, you know, let me be perfectly honest, I do like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> A bit of ego in there too. Well, listen, that's why, we, that's why I went into journalism. And if we lose you today, if you, you are suspended, then we lose someone who wanted to make a difference, who had a genuine intention, caring, compassionate. I always said that a lot of, a lot of people have come out with real compassion and courage um, because, you know, you have been smeared and attacked and it can't be easy. But I'm sure you've had a lot of support as well um, from the public. Yes, in terms of, I mean, I've had some very nasty emails and death wishes, but overwhelmingly my... Uh, my um, uh, email box, which is teeming, I'm afraid, hundreds of emails, overwhelming here to support. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. And um, yeah, let's see if we can fight these bullies, is what I would say. You know, there's not all journalists are from the old media are like that. But like, come on, let's let's have a debate. You know, let's talk about the Great Barrington Declaration. Let's speak to Professor Martin Pauldorf and not smear him. Um, I think there's a lot of shame at the moment within um, my profession, my previous profession in the old media brands, and I think they need to get their act together. I hope they get their act together um, and let people debate, and let people speak without being smeared. But thank you very much for talking to me. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. You're all the best. Bye.